What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today we're in Photoshop and I'm going to be showing you how to create this paper tear header. Now you don't have to create a header, you could create like a poster or just any kind of design. I'm obviously just doing a Twitter header for this because it's a nice simple layout and it's pretty big. There's one thing you're going to have to download for this tutorial and it's a bunch of paper element assets which was actually posted on my Patreon few months ago I want to say because I post weekly goods there and this was one of them so if you want access to that be sure to check out my patreon uh, but you can download this pack for free and I've also added an extra asset for this tutorial so if you want to download that before we get started that'd be great before I get into the tutorial I want to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like the video if you enjoy at 100 likes I will post the PSD for this header in the description down below for you guys to download um, or if you want it now you can join my patreon if you join at a five dollar tier you get all my project files from my videos and this is included but anyways let's go ahead and get started so here we are in photoshop and this is what we're going to be creating so let's go ahead and create a new document oops um, and we're going to be using the Twitter header, which is 3000 by 1000 at 300 resolution. Like I said, though, you can really do this for anything. It could be a poster, just a social media post, whatever. Um, let's double click. Everything's going to pop up on the other monitor, by the way. Sorry about that. Uh, double click. I always like to make my background black by just pressing command I on the white layer. I, for whatever reason, my background set as white as default, but let's go ahead, get a solid color first and make that 10, 10, 10. And again, this is on the wrong monitor. Um, so 10, 10, 10, and it's like a dark gray. And then you wanna go ahead and open up the paper elements pack, which would have been included in the download below. And if I close these up, you can see you'll have three folders like this and this burning paper. Uh, I'll mention the burning paper at the end, but the first thing we want to do is get the paper texture shapes. Now these will all be visible probably, um, like so, but we're going to only use two and three, I believe. Yeah. So let's go ahead and grab two and drag that over. It's going to be slightly smaller, but that's fine. I'm going to press command minus to zoom out and let's make this fill the whole bottom. Something like that. I'm gonna give it a little rotation. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it here, but you can right click and warp this to get even more um, customizable shapes. So I could bring like this down, this part up, move this around a little bit. So um, it really won't mess with the um, quality of the paper tear. It should work out no matter what. So I'm just gonna leave it as that. Um, feel free to warp it as much as you want. If you go a little too crazy, it might screw up the edge texture, but um, you should be pretty good to do some minor warping. Uh, let's grab the three one then. And I'm going to press Command T, rotate this one. And this is going to be in the top left corner like that. Let's go back over to our elements pack. Let's hide that. Let's grab the paper shapes. And some of these shapes are the same, just like, like different sizes. But we're going to grab the top one called shape bring that over and this is going to be in the middle. Now we want a guide for the middle. So I'm going to click the background layer and just put this right in the middle like that. Grab the shape, press command T and align it centrally. And I'm actually going to press alt and bring the size down while holding shift and maybe make it a little bit bigger too. Just holding alt. Something like that is pretty good. And I, I like this angle. Of course, you could have it like that or however you want. You could have it straight across up to you. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and grab the one below it then just because it's the right orientation. And I'm going to press command T and bring down the size, rotate it slightly that way and have this off to the left. You notice these are basically the same shapes, though. I just grabbed that second one because it's a different orientation. Duplicate one of them and bring it over to the right. And we're gonna just jack up the size and have a bit of the corner there. Like that. Now that's the setup for all the pieces. Now let's go and grab some tape. So I'm just gonna grab one of these and duplicate it. So we're gonna have, uh, let's decrease the size. We're gonna have one on the top right corner. Let's duplicate it, put it at the left corner here and then duplicate it one more time to have it on this left piece so uh we have three pieces of tape 
you could add more you could mix it up and use the different ones because they're these are different so feel free to just pick and choose which ones you want to use i feel like you don't really notice that these are all the same so it kind of works out just duplicating the same one um, but now let's put these into groups so this is the bottom one i'm going to group it and call it bottom and i'm going to speed through this and just organize a little bit Okay, so these are all organized into groups titled for their position. Uh, and we're gonna come in now and I have a library of colors and these four colors are actually my color scheme. So I'm gonna use my pink and my blue for my color scheme. I have the blue over here already. So the hex code for that is 42CDFF and I just copied that. And we're gonna come into the uh, two paper layer or paper texture layers, which is the bottom and the top left. Duplicate it, double click color overlay and we're going to use that blue and it's on multiply and that should make it the appropriate color which it does let's click ok i'm going to right click then copy layer style and paste that to my other one and actually we got to duplicate this one and then paste it and then on those colored layers we're going to press command t right click warp and just bring them in slightly on one side so you get this like white paper tear there and let's do the same thing to the bottom. The bottom's a little more complicated because it's not just one across. So we're gonna drag the right side and then the left and then the middle up. Maybe we bring this down a little further. Okay, so something like that, that's pretty good. Let's right click rasterize these um, because if you add images on top, which is something I'll show you, uh, if you have the layer style still active, it will apply that to the image as well, which we don't want. Now let's go back over to our paper elements and let's grab some textures because I like to work with the textures. So uh, we want to grab one of these folded ones um, like this with like a lot of the folded wrinkles. Um, so grab whichever one you like the best. I'm going to grab the third one, bring that over and we're going to drag this to the very top. Press command T, make sure it encapsulates everything which this does and then let's go ahead and grab one of these subtler textures which uh, the bottom two are grab one of those and do the same thing this one we're going to knock down the opacity to something like 70 just so it's a little less um, visible cool now another thing i did was on the middle one i duplicated that middle shape here um, this guy and then on the bottom one i made it pink so actually since this is a shape layer i can just click my pink and it will make it pink and obviously you can't see that so if i press command t right click and actually we won't warp we'll just command click the side point so let's command click this drag it up a bit command click this drag it down a bit command zero to zoom out and now we get a little pink edge now since this pack had colored layers all these are different colors which i hate so i'm gonna make all these gray real fast much better now you can also add textures to different parts of or like different cutouts so i'm gonna grab this texture and just add it to my top right right here and drag down the opacity just so this is a little different from everything else because it kind of stands out on its own and I'm gonna make it no color again. But now we can go to the very top above the textures and add some text. You can actually put the textures in a group if you want to make it easier and then grab the text tool. We're gonna to use the same color as our background, 101010, and then bring up the guide and click right in the middle and type your text, which is gonna be Noah Kwezi for me. Uh, and the font I'm using is Gotham Black and I'm using the italicized version, but it's up to you what you use. And let's go ahead and drag this up a bit. I'm gonna duplicate it and bring it down and add some subtext. So I'm just gonna use some filler text, whoops, and do something like item one, item two, and this is item three, just so it's a little longer. Um, and then press command T, hold alt, and just decrease the size of that a bit. Cool. Maybe bump it up with the arrow key. That's pretty good. Let's select both of those. Command T, rotate them to fit our shape here. And that's pretty good. Now this whole thing might be on too harsh of an angle. So I'm gonna have these selected still and then uh, command click the middle group 
And I'm gonna close that, press Command T, and let's just rotate it so it's a little less harsh, and that's much better. Now, I also added like social media over to the left here, but you could add whatever you wanted here. I'm gonna kind of speed through adding social media here. I also have a social icons pack that was a part of my Patreon, um, one of the weekly goods. So you just need to get your social icons and I'll speed through this part. All right, and there are some quick socials. Um, we're gonna add a quick levels and human saturation as well, just to kind of clean this up. So add a levels, bring this right one in, and that will brighten everything up. You can also bring this left one in slightly. I'm gonna zoom out a tad and then add a hue and saturation. I'm just gonna bump down the saturation a tiny bit because it's a little too bright and we still want it to look like paper so it can't be too, too bright. Now another thing I did was uh, I came to my main text, duplicated it and brought it to the way bottom. And we're gonna double click on it, copy it, go to the end, press space, paste it, return, paste it, space, paste it, space, paste it, return, paste, space, paste, space, paste, space, paste, return, paste, space, paste, space, paste, space, paste, space, paste. So you add a new one to every line and go to fill, set that to zero, double click on it, go to stroke, go to center, four pixels, and I'm using pink, but you could use white or a more subtle color, up to you. Click OK. Press Command T and let's bring this over to the right side. So it's just the text repeated and this could be any text. I, I made it the main text, but you could of course have it be anything. And I'm gonna press Command T on that and actually just decrease the size so it's a little smaller. Now, if you wanna add images, um, say you wanna add an image to the bottom here. Uh, I'm gonna go over to my original and show you I had two images in either spot here. Uh, and since I don't have these images saved, let me just grab one real quick and bring it over. Um, so here is an image and I want it down here. Let's duplicate the layer below, which is the bottom layer, the colored one. Alt click on our image so it is now a clipping mask. And I'm in the wrong one. Let's go to the bottom and do that. Okay, so now we have our image clipping mask to this bottom part. You can see it looks a little funky because it gets cut off. So we're gonna go to that bottom one, bring it down, alt click, right click, warp, or command T, um, right click, warp. Let's take away that bottom left and then bring up the right, something like that, which I think looks pretty cool. And then we can rearrange our image to fit better. Maybe I want this row. Yeah, so, and then you can do that to the top left. You could do that to the right. It's up to you, but that's like a cool way to add the images. I'm gonna go ahead and close all of my folders now, just so this next part's a little bit easier, which is just adding some textures to the background. So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna get white as my color and get my brush tool. And I have this marble uh, texture with, or brush, which is from my brush pack two. And I'm gonna click in the background and press Command T extend this all the way across, decrease the opacity so it's very subtle, so about 40, and then go to filter, distort, wave. And I just left them at the default settings and clicked okay, because I just wanted them distorted a little bit. And we could even make this more subtle. I just wanted a little bit of a white texture in the background there. And then if I create another new layer with white, I wanna go ahead and grab some brushes. So I have this cool Patreon brush pack that, again, I added to the Patreon for a weekly good. It has this cool squiggle, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of those effects on the edge. So something like that, so they kind of peek through. I think it's a cool look. You could also decrease the opacity so it's not, it's not too harsh. Finally, the other element I added was, if you go to the paper elements pack, the thing I added that wasn't originally on the Patreon pack is this flame um, or this burning paper, which I think is a really cool enhancement. Like if you have a good color scheme and stuff, like this could look really good. For mine, it didn't look the best, but I still thought it was interesting and I wanted to show you. So let's go ahead and add this to, we'll add it to the right first. We'll have it peeking through like that. Let's set it to screen. 
duplicate it, Command T, right click, flip vertical. And let's bring it to the top left. I'm really happy with how this design looks. If you want to do one more thing and select everything, press Command J, Command E to merge, Command A to select everything that's visible, Command C to copy, Command V to paste. Um, you get this cropped version of the final product. And then if you go to filter, camera roll filter, we can add a quick vignette, which will top this off. So you just want to go down to optics, vignette, and increase the black. Click OK, and you get a nice vignette, and I'm really happy with how this looks. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's a pretty cool looking design, and of course you could use it for anything, which I think is really neat. Again, if you enjoy, please subscribe and like the video, 100 likes, and I'll put the PSD down below for you guys to download. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Quezzy, follow my Instagram, that's Quezzy. Support me on Patreon if you enjoy the tutorials, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.